With his plans to build his own wedding on the cheap, Steve needs to get some authentic Western essentials together, starting with a wigwam, I mean marquee. It's £1,500 to rent one, but luckily I can buy two for £800 quid on a second-hand website. Let's hope he can get it up. Then the boys get suited and cowboy booted. Oh, Steve, yes. Oh, yeah, 18 quid. And buy some Wild West bridesmaids' dresses. Yeah, that looks good. Finally, armed with a fistful of dollars, they hit an auction house for cowboy wedding props. Is it all one lot? It is as well. They bid on rings and pocket watches. At 120, I'll sell. Taxidermy. Write the lot number down my mind. A box of old antlers. Last time at 19. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, dear. What are you doing? <laughs> And how much have they spent on those not even vaguely Wild West items? £1,234.20. Thank you very much, love. Ooh, there'll be pistols at dawn. Back at Steve's, the flat is packed full of second-hand items to build his reception. I'll suck my belly in. To cook costs yeah. even further, he's taken on the role of caterer, too. God knows why we didn't get somebody to do my buffet at the wedding. I'm still sort of questioning that now and spent nearly £700 on food and drink. So we've got an Indian platter, an Oriental platter. A Wild West platter? No, obviously not. Now for the booze, and um, what's he doing? The reason we're putting it all into plastic bottles is because it's a live animal field that we're going on to, so we can't have glass bottles on there, and he's basically said anybody caught with a glass bottle, he'll throw the lot of us off. So, as awkward as it is, we've got to transfer everything into plastic containers. With the van packed full of second-hand goods and only a day to the wedding, Steve and Marcus set off on the 140-mile drive to the Lake District to get started on putting up a marquee, building a bar and, well, everything, really. The kind of weather that we like, disgusting, wet, cold weather while we build an entire wedding reception. Good job it's not an outdoor wedding in the middle of a valley. Oh, wait, it is. Ah, oh, this is disgusting. At least they're not alone. As Steve's groomsman, Woody, and his son, Connor, are here to help. Ten people, you told me. Yeah, I lie a lot, mate, when it comes to making you do stuff for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned that. Are they sure they're the right ones? Positive, bro. Yeah. Watch the YouTube video. If you look right, the gazebo, the instructions it's got, different numbers on different parts. So that's a six. That seven can't go... That can't be right. That's what's going to actually hold it, hold it up. I tell you what, it's a good job I didn't leave you to do this marquee on your own, Steve. But he's about to, as Steve has scrimped on transport, and so Marcus is playing chauffeur and is back off to Leeds to pick up Leona. So I think Steve's well underestimated the, uh, the experience and how much it's going to take to put up. I think when I come back, it's still going to be putting up said marquee. Just... See you later. Desperate times call for desperate trips to the local village hall. Oh, there we go, look. Oh, you what? This is absolutely spot on. Yeah, the spider loves it. We are in the middle of a big renovation project, so it's not the best in the best state. No, that's fine. It's what better than a soggy field. And you're an absolute legend, mate. Thank you very much. Legend. With less than 24 hours to go, Steve books the village hall for a small donation. The wedding reception is on. Look what I've just caught outside Bay. Now he just needs to turn it into a Wild West saloon. <laughs> I ain't got the lungs for this anymore. One hour into Leona's journey... Is there not a transport provided? Her mum calls with news of people's struggle to travel so far at the last minute. I'm going to murder him. And he promised me if it were far away, he would do that and he wouldn't do this to me. My poor granddad and grandma. No-one's going to come. Back in the lakes, Steve's been asked to call Leona's stepdad. Hello? Jay? Yeah. yeah? It's Steve, mate. How are we doing? Ah, uh, I'm quite well, to be honest. Not everyone wants to So, basically, everyone's just meeting at Thelmia Cottage. We'll then go to the wedding, and then you guys will just come back to your room and drop your stuff off after. Who's got a room? Uh, you and Chrissy have got a room. Steve and Michelle have got a room in the same place, and then there's ten bunk beds for whoever else needs to sleep. It's... Chris's, Chris's dad's 85. Can't put him in a bunk bed, can you? Yeah, but Leo said they won't come in. Well, he ain't gonna happen, is it? Ah, yeah. well... Don't come, don't come then, mate. There you go. My phone's here. Leo will be here. I'm not in the mood for it in the slightest. 
from Ramit as far as I'm concerned. We're putting through all this effort for her to go through. It's the night before. I've looked in the local area around Felmia. There's 40 hotel rooms still available. You want to book your eight to five year old dad in a hotel room, book him, because I've never met him, so. After another two hours fuming about her family's travel issues, Leona and Maid of Honor Shannon have reached the bridal suite. I do try to see the positive in every situation, but even this has got the better of me. <laughs> Steve's definitely got his work cut out tomorrow uh, to win round Leona, and especially a family. In her eyes, it's come across that, you know, he's slotted his family out first and just there's a second best, whatever happens, happens, he's not, you know, not in truly bothered. I feel very hurt, the fact my own partner has put my mother in tears. And if the people he loves are just there, you know, what? what's the point of me being there? There's just none. To be honest, I just, I just want to go home. <laughs>